This is going to be a very strange, non-sponsored discussion of this Abasi Legion Lorada. When I bought this guitar, it arrived with a sound defect, so I haven't been able to plug it in and actually hear it. But in the process of setting up the return, I was able to squeeze in 15 and a half hours of unamplified use, so I do have several thoughts to share with you today that I haven't seen discussed anywhere else all about the design and features of this instrument. And although I can't provide you with any type of tone demo, I already know that this guitar isn't for me personally because of where it falls on the guitar design matrix, but I'll explain that later. First, let's start with all of the positives about this guitar, and there is a lot of positive. Starting from the headstock, we have this really cool design with three per side Abasi branded locking tuners and a graphite nut. The neck feels very comfortable and pretty much exactly how you would expect it to feel, and I mean that as a compliment. It's a pretty thin U-shape with a nice satin back, and you can feel the grit of the Wenge throughout the neck, which I quite like. There's also a 12 to 16 inch compound radius, which sounds like a pretty standard spec for a modern guitar, but because of the nut width and the overall thinness of this neck, everything feels a lot flatter than you might expect, but I quite like that. This guitar also has 24 really big stainless steel frets that are polished and leveled and really nice fret ends. The fretwork on here is really, really good. I also really like the inlay design on top of the ebony fretboard. I like the whole matte look and black of the entire guitar. So in terms of the overall quality and comfort of the neck and the design choices, I'm really, really happy with this instrument. For me personally, the neck might be a tad bit too thin, but I actually think I can get used to it over time. And that isn't a deal breaker in this particular case. The next huge positive is of course these Fishman Fluence Tosin Abasi pickups. Now, of course I haven't heard them on this guitar, but I've played them before. You've heard a ton of YouTube demos on them, I'm sure. And I personally think they sound amazing. So I'm going to assume that this guitar would sound fantastic as well. Now, when Fishman Fluence pickups come on a non-signature model guitar, they're usually the Fishman Fluence Moderns, which I also like, but I do like the Tosin Abasi versions a lot better. The knob also has a very grippy knurling, which I like, and it feels smooth. And the placement of the output jack on the back of the instrument, the back on the top, this is also fantastic. And no matter how you hold this guitar, the cable's never going to get in your way. And for me, the final huge, huge positive is this Goto 510 trim. Now, if you like two-point trims, you already know about the Goto. It's pretty much the best trim you can get for the money. And as you would expect, this guitar holds tune really, really well, very smooth. It feels really nice. And finally, I'll say it again, I really like the looks of this overall guitar. I love the matte black and black hardware. I love the look of this really big single cut design. And I really like the fact that this bevel down here matches the forearm bevel. And I don't think this serves any purpose, but it is a nice design aesthetic and it looks really cool to see that bevel all around the entire guitar. So in my opinion, this guitar has a lot going for it. Now, in this next section of the video, I want to get to what I consider to be a few issues, and one of them is a big deal breaker for me personally. But before I do, I wanna share a few disclaimers. Number one, although this video is not sponsored and I did purchase this guitar with my own money, I have contacted Abasi Concepts in the past to request a demo unit, and although they never sent me anything, you should know that this is a company that I did and do want to work with in the future. Number two, this design is obviously a radical departure from a standard electric guitar, and I'm very happy when any company is attempting to go outside of the box, even if that design choice isn't for me personally. These bold choices are really important for the guitar community as a whole because it pushes design and innovation forward. Okay, so when it comes to the physical design of a guitar, I feel that most things fit into a combination of three categories, heritage, ergonomics, and artistic. For example, the classic Tele and the Les Paul are heritage designs, Strandberg's Klein guitars, these are ergonomic designs, which above all else are meant to improve comfort. And then we have all of the funky guitar shapes that are very clearly artistic choices. And most guitars have some attributes from each of these categories. For example, the Strat is a heritage design, but it has ergonomic forearm and belly cuts. The Strandberg is an ergonomic design, but some might also consider it an artistic statement. And none of these categories are good or bad, but we all have our preferences. Final example, Josh Smith is someone who has a signature Ibanez Tele guitar, and it's a purely heritage shape, 
no contours whatsoever. And then we have someone like Richie Kotzen who has his own signature telly from Fender and that has contours to make it more comfortable, a bit more ergonomic. Both are awesome guitars, but designed for different people with different preferences. And I personally prefer ergonomics and comfort above all else. The major difficulty I'm having with this Abbasi guitar is that I thought it was designed for ergonomics, but as I play it, it feels more like an artistic design. Of course, few things are perfect on first attempts, so I hope that these critiques are useful for future iterations of the Abbasi design. And I'll give one more disclaimer about ergonomics before I continue. Every single person is different, all of our bodies are different, and what we like in terms of our angle of guitars and whatnot is going to be different. So just because I don't find this design ergonomic for me, that doesn't necessarily mean that you won't find it ergonomic or comfortable for you. So I definitely encourage you to see if you can pick one up and try it, and maybe this is actually your dream guitar. The first issue I'm having is with this pickup selector switch. You'll notice that the angle is straight instead of diagonal like a normal switch. And I do think this orientation looks good from an artistic perspective, but I found it to be less useful when actually playing. I rarely hit a five-way switch on any other guitar, but I found myself constantly hitting this switch. It also comes out at an angle that's pointed a bit more this way than straight on which again, might have been designed for ergonomic choice. I think it's a good idea to try, but I'm not really finding it useful. The next thing I wanna talk about is the neck joint. Again, from the front, I think it looks super cool having this extra long upper part here. And even from the back, I really love how this sculpting just looks from an aesthetic, artistic perspective. But although I think it looks super cool, I personally find it very uncomfortable. So when playing in lower positions, I usually have my thumb hidden behind the neck. And occasionally I'll wrap it around for muting, for bending, or for special types of chords. But for the most part in these positions, the thumb is not visible. But as I move to playing in the higher frets, I notice that me, and I've noticed this in other players as well, my thumb tends to get a little bit higher so that from your perspective, you can see my thumb peeking out behind the neck. So you can test this yourself, grab your guitar and play a couple of licks above the 12th fret and look at where your thumb is. If the audience can see your thumb poking above the neck whatsoever, even if you aren't wrapping around, then you might find the Abbasi design a bit more restrictive. When I play almost anything above the 12th fret with this guitar, my hand just feels very strange and locked in in a way that I personally don't enjoy. Moreover, even if you don't run into this issue, I can't see how this design right here can actually improve the comfort. So my guess is that this is a solely artistic choice. And I'm happy to see that Abbasi Concepts also has a double cut model. And hopefully I can try a six string version of that guitar when it's released. That looks like it'll be a more comfortable choice for me personally. The last thing I wanna talk about is this body shape. Now, if you play guitar the quote unquote normal way with it over your right leg like this, then this guitar is going to feel as comfortable as any other guitar. It also has some really nice sculpting on the back. And again, if you like this aggressive forearm contour trend, you'll find this guitar very comfortable. But when I saw the rear of this instrument, I assumed it was designed to improve the seated ergonomics, and I can't really find a comfortable use for this, and not more comfortable than any other normal guitar. I did a recent video discussing seated position ergonomics, so you may wanna check that out, I'll link it right here. But in a nutshell, when we stand with an electric guitar, we have the neck at around 45 degrees, give or take. And it's a good idea to mimic that position while seated. A common way to achieve that goal on a standard electric guitar is to sit in the classical position, with your left leg propped up on a stool and the electric guitar between your legs. And this is better than the old school position with it on top of your right leg, but even this improved classical position isn't perfect. Number one, it shifts the entire guitar over to the left, and when you're playing, it introduces a slight twist into the body when you're in the lower positions. And this is still better than the alternative, but it's not ideal. Ideally, we would have the guitar such that our body was neutral and that the neck wasn't shifted over to the left. 
When we compared the Abasi to the standard electric guitar, the Abasi is definitely slightly better because of this cutaway at the back. However, the guitar is still shifted over a bit too far to the left, and it still does introduce a slight twist into the torso when playing. I've tried many other positions over the last few days with this guitar, you know, like this and like this, and I just can't find a very ergonomic position using the rear of this instrument. If you appreciate the level of detail I'm providing you in these videos with hard to find guitars, give this video a like and share it with someone who you think will enjoy this content. I use the Perform Axe device on non-ergonomic guitars to make them more comfortable, and I'll link a video review of this up here as well. And interestingly enough, I've also seen videos of Tosin Abasi using his Abasi guitar and the Perform Axe. So it's possible that the ergonomics on that guitar just aren't perfect yet. And I'll say it one final time, most of my guitars, including this one, which I love, are not ergonomic guitars, and non-ergonomic guitars are not bad. But when I saw the Abasi guitars and when I purchased one, I just assumed I was getting a very ergonomic design. Which brings me to my conclusion. By the way, if you like this very nerdy talk that doesn't have any type of guitar playing related to it, you'll want to check out my Guitar Craft and Other Stuff podcast. I talk a lot about nerdy things like this over there. I'll link it below. The closest thing that I can compare this Abasi guitar to is the Aaron Marshall signature guitar by Schechter. And that guitar and this guitar have very similar specs. They both have locking tuners, a one gain neck, ebony fretboard, jumbo stainless steel frets, 12 to 16 inch compound radius even, and also they both have the Goto 510 bridge. And interestingly enough, the inlays on this guitar and the Aaron Marshall guitar are actually opposites, but that's not important. Let's get to the point here. The Aaron Marshall guitar is $1,400 USD. This Abasi guitar is $2,000 USD. If you love Totes and Abasi signature pickups, which I do, and if you're tired of the standard looking double cut designs, and if you want slightly improved ergonomics, I think this guitar can be a good choice. But if you're buying one of these guitars because you think it's going to be as ergonomic as say, a Strandberg guitar or even a Klein guitar, I don't think that this guitar is at that level of ergonomics just yet. At least not for me, my body, and my playing. That being said, I think this Abasi guitar has unlocked something I hope is refined in the future. See, I love the ergonomics of my Strandberg guitar, but I prefer a normal headstock and tuners of a normal guitar like this Abasi here. Now, although the Strandberg's headless design kind of bothers me, the fact that it's so ergonomic and comfortable, to me that outweighs the annoyance of not having tuners. But if we can slightly redesign this Abasi guitar so that the rear cutaway makes it a bit more ergonomic than it is right now, I think that this guitar, perhaps in a different model, can represent the ultimate ergonomic guitar because we would still have a headstock, tuners, or normal bridge, and so on. Now, I don't know what that design would look like. I don't know how it will balance. I don't know if it's even possible. But if Abasi Concepts figures it out, I'll be the first one to pre-order that guitar. By the way, I'm Andre Flood, and I'll talk to you soon.